Okay, so um, you're interested in planting Oregon white oak. Maybe you can't find seedlings at a nursery or you're interested in going out and hunting for your own in the fall. So um, my friend Mitch here has done a lot of work with collecting acorns on his own. So we're going to ask him a few questions about kind of what his process is. So if you're looking for acorns, what time of year are you usually heading out? It'll be late fall, uh, anywhere from mid-September to mid-October, 1st of November. Okay, and what are you looking for when you're going out looking for acorns? I'm looking for these little guys. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really important, first step, is make sure you identify it as an Oregon white oak. Uh, as you can see, there's a little variability in the acorn. I would say it's more important to identify it by the tree. You can do that. They have very distinctive leaves, white oaks, with rounded lobes. If you compare that to a black oak or red oak, you can see the spines on the tips of these. Not a white oak, not an Oregon white oak. And these acorns look a little bit different, but you're saying go with the leaves in terms of um, yes. for identification. And usually, you know, you're going to find more Oregon white oaks a little bit outside of the city, more likely to find a non-native oak in the city, I would say. Um, so after you get the acorns, what do you? What's your process like? Are you um, are you storing them or are you planting them right away? Well, first thing I do is is check their viability, and to do that, viability meaning are they going to grow a tree or not grow a tree? So sometimes insects get to them; uh, they'll have a little hole in the side of it. Those aren't even worth collecting. But the the way to make sure is to do a float test. So you get a bucket of water. Take all the acorns you collected, drop them in the water, and the ones that sink to the bottom are viable. Those are the ones that will grow a tree. The ones that float, chuck them, get rid of those. Then um, you can store them in the refrigerator. I would uh, dry them off first, maybe put them in a paper bag and store them in the fridge until you're ready to go out and plant. Okay. So in, I know that you've tried to grow some seedlings at your house. So you've um, kind of tried to grow from acorns to a little bit bigger size. So maybe could you show us kind of what you do with this uh, one gallon nursery pot here? Sure, you bet. So uh, typically we'll do a mix of potting soil. It can just be anything you would use for your garden, that kind of thing. And mix some of the native soil uh, from where you're going to plant. So you can take a bag of potting soil out and, and do it if you're planting the acorns in the ground or just do it in your pot here. So I, I typically mix it this way just because I don't have any better way. But you fill the pot. You can make a mess and mix things together. This gives the soil just a little bit more nutrient, a little more tilt. Makes it easier for the acorn to grow. Uh, and then very simply, you turn the acorn on its side and you put it a quarter to a half an inch below the surface, cover it up, you just planted an acorn. Okay, so after you've planted that, so this is in the fall, right now we're in middle of November, so this is a good time to be doing this. So you might expect to grow that out for two or more years potentially? I would say a minimum of two years. They just don't build a good enough root system in year one. So a minimum of two, uh, longer if you want. Okay, and then it seems like if you've got this planted out, I mean, I know in my backyard, the jays and the squirrels, they're all over any acorn and they're bringing them in too. So do you have any suggestions on like how to protect it maybe? I, I do have suggestions. At least one, I learned the hard way and lost a number of seedlings. These would have acorns planted in them. This is the way I did it and I took just a wire mesh to put over the top, keeps the squirrels out. I came out very disappointed the first time I did this to find that almost all of my acorns were gone. So plant squirrels in my neighborhood. I use just a string, you can use anything. You could use a bungee cord, whatever. But just to collect the edges so that they can't crawl in underneath and uh, your acorns will be protected. Yeah, I've, I've used just a brick or something before and I've kind of just kept that on there. And then once they sprouted, I've even left this on for, you know, for a while. I've, I've seen them go after the acorns even after it sprouted uh, sometimes. Um, right. So in so important, there's not a whole lot to do with this. You're just leaving this out for just the rainfall here in Western Oregon. 
but when it comes to summertime, are you uh, fertilizing? Are you watering at that point? Like, what, what do you think? Uh, yeah, typically I would fertilize maybe a couple of times during the growing season. I also water uh, when water becomes scarce. So you don't have to be doing it early in the season. Uh, it's maybe late July, early August, and September, the most critical times to water these. And once every couple of weeks, a gallon or so, you'll see it running out the bottom of the container. You'll know that you've fully saturated the soil, uh, and it's as simple as that. Yeah. I think, you know, starting things from acorns, it's a great way to do it. You get to choose the tree that you're getting it from. You know where the seed's coming from. You're getting that uh, genetic variability, and you get the satisfaction of kind of growing it out yourself. So, um, oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, all right, well, thanks, Mitch. And um, if, you know, people have more questions, they can go to our website at twaltonswcd.org. Um, and, you know, we'd be happy to talk more about finding your own acorns, planting them out, or connecting you with seedlings or other materials so that you can, you know, start planting more Oregon white oak throughout the county. Thanks.